This story is sponsored by EcoFlow. Well, now that the peak of fall had passed and the ephemeral beauty was no longer stealing all our attention, we were back home working hard, balancing paying work with endless projects that needed to be finished before winter. And beyond the seasonal shift, there was new change in the Trout and Coffee family too. And I'll show you how that came about later on in the story. But for now, let's take it back to the very end of October, when it was starting to really look like stick season, except for the lower canopy and a few hardy trees that always held strong into November. And on one golden morning, in the wood smoke air, we caught a beautiful show in the parking lot. No matter how many times I see these exact trees lose their leaves year after year, the experience never loses its shine. And while one side of a mountain might be bare of leaves, the other side may have patches left, though it wouldn't be long till the wind and the frost would prevail. Oh, I figured out you could take them from the front. And as the last of the color slipped away day by day, I tried to savor my final glimpses. It's 
uh, late October, rainy day. I'm editing all day, trying to catch up on videos and taking a little break to come out here and capture some content. And there's just nothing like an October forest in the rain when it knocks the leaves down. And the different colored trees speckle underneath themselves. You know, there's rainbows, there's orange and yellow and red, and you can spot them from far away. And when you go underneath them, it's, it feels fake. It's like Skittles. It's so beautiful. <sighs> it's been a busy year and an even busier fall. Never worked this hard in my life trying to get out of debt so we can get out of this apartment and buy a house. And uh, I haven't had as many little moments like this where I've been by myself just capturing the beauty of it all. And it's nice to be out here. And I just wanted to document this for your future self so that you remember this moment. Before long, we were chipping through November, and one of my best friends left a note on my van that he had a major life change ahead. And with my rover down and old blue down, my van was my only transportation, but the clutch was starting to feel a little funky, and we had a lot of work ahead at the cabin that would require a useful and capable vehicle. So while I was working away editing these stories, I was also researching vehicles that I could replace my old Rover with. Something cheap that was simple and reliable, that could tow my snowmobiles and make it to the cabin in deep snow. But above all, Something that was beautiful and made me happy and would be a joy to drive every day. I wasn't prepared. I didn't know a recipe off the top of my head. No. I was just thinking, like, how good would a strawberry shortcake be? Oh, it's and I had a few good nights with some of my oldest friends at the local haunts. And since the handle had fallen off, the cabin door had been flying open for the last few months, open to all the critters. So we finally made time to fix it. Happy to see this thing gone. at the door with Mitch this morning after breakfast and don't know how neither one of us <laughs> remembered to check if it was left hand or right left side or right side swing and we got the wrong side swing so now we got to go back to Home Depot which is a long ways away from the cabin so ah uh, just a little lessons when you're in the building mode and your mind is on it you tend hopefully to avoid those mistakes, but when you're balancing so many plates at once and you're not in a building mode, 
these type of little mistakes can happen all the time and they're really annoying. So always best to check out every detail twice and go slow so that you don't waste time returning things for no reason. But it happens. The truth is we brought that first door back 45 minutes to Home Depot, got another one, and then brought it all the way back to the cabin again before realizing it was the wrong size. So that meant two doors returned to Home Depot in the same day and tons of wasted driving. It's hard not to be frustrated with yourself after that. But oh well, all I could do was go to the local hardware store and order the exact size we needed. Lesson learned. And soon after, the clutch finally gave out. So I was officially without any transportation of my own, which is one of my least favorite feelings. On to a new chapter. But after countless hours of research and some rare happenstance, I found exactly what I needed. I was looking up Toyota Land Cruisers when this 1988 Azuzu Trooper popped up. It was less than a third of the price of the cruisers, but very comparable in most ways. And it was right up in Maine. Also, I recognized it right away because my dad's close fishing buddy had one, and I always used to admire it when it was parked at our house. <laughs> Come on in, Allie. Hi. Hi, I'm Paul. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And back to right there, if uh, you guys drove many miles. Yeah. Yeah, poke around the moon. Yes. The car is nice. beautiful. Oh, um, no. that car is. Uh, no, they, come on out. That's where you are. Yeah. <laughs> bathroom, water, coffee, any of the above? Maybe coffee before we go. Let's do it. This one's from California, and it has zero rust and only 86,000 miles. Manual everything two-speed transfer case, and a cassette player. Nothing you don't need, and so much less stuff to break. It's only four cylinders and doesn't have much power, but it gets decent gas mileage. And it just had a ton of work done to it, including a new heavy-duty head, which is perfect because blown head gaskets were one of the trooper's only downfalls. So I called and I hit it off right away with the guy, and I had a good feeling. I said I'd be up in the next few days to see it. But the next day, he called me and said it had sold. I was so bummed. So I looked for other similar troopers, and there were only two others of this vintage in decent shape in the entire country. And they were way more expensive than this one, and they had double the miles. But I had done so much research, and I was hooked on troopers now, and I was just about to make a move on one of those, when I got a call from this guy again. And he said that the deal had fallen through. I couldn't believe it and we raced up to Maine as soon as we could. Like I imagine. <laughs> it's so, it's so responsive. Like it's, when you turn, when you, wow, it's so fun to drive. <laughs> Oh my god, it's just like I imagined. <laughs> this is fantastic. I could I not. I love it. Oh my god. I love this with my whole heart. This is unbelievable. I could not be happier, like. Mm. This is cool to be in Kenny Bunkport in the rain. Yeah. Let me tell you, I think like my windshield must like I wiped it off. Thank you. And up in Maine, there were already signs of festive things to come. And 
so we drove along the ocean under the moon in pure euphoria and decided to stay the night at a tiny motel. And for the first time in possibly ever, I had gotten a good deal. And I put practicality first, but somehow aesthetic and genuine joy still came with it. <laughs> I need a haircut. And as soon as we got home, I brought that little trooper to the cabin and put it to work. So now that fall is pretty much over and things have calmed down, we're gonna be getting back into cabin mode and trying to button it up before winter. It's gonna be close because snow is already coming. It's, it's been snowing off and on a lot. And I just wanted to share with you how we're gonna be powering this place. And it's with the EcoFlow Delta Pro and the whole ecosystem built around this. These units are incredible. The thing is, is I actually bought my own Delta Pro with an extra battery and a smart generator before I even had this partnership with EcoFlow. This was what I had decided after tons and tons of research. It, it was just the easiest, most integrated, simplest way to do it. You can stack these in tandem. Just one of these is 3.6 kilowatt hours, but you can stack them with an extra battery, then you get 7,200 kilowatt hours, and you can stack that all the way up to something like 25 kilowatt hours. And if you chain two of these together, you can get 240 volts. I don't even really need to look at the spec sheet to tell you everything about this, because I already know it. I, I researched it up and down. We're gonna have an array of EcoFlow solar panels, and you can integrate this all in the app. Their app is so simple, clean, easy to use. You can see all your devices, their percentages. It's got these wheels and this really nice handle that stows away. This has so much power. It has so many different ports. The interface is incredible. I mean, it's got all of my information. The way I'm setting it up in the cabin is I have a transfer switch and then I can just plug in a 30 amp cable from my transfer switch right into this port here. And this thing alone powers the whole cabin, no problem. You can plug this into the wall and it will charge in under two hours. There's so many ways you can charge it. You can plug it into the car. You can go to an electric car charging station and plug it in on the side right there. And you can charge it with solar. And it has extreme technology, which means you can charge with all of those at once. It's got a bunch of fans built in at the top that are working all the time to keep it cool. Just to know you've got a system like this that not only is it built to last, but can handle anything you throw at it. This is thick, hard ABS plastic. It's just well built. It's meant to be able to take a tumble. So if you're in the market for products like these, EcoFlow is running their biggest sale of the year for Black Friday. You can get up to 50% off on some products. So hit the link in the video description below to check out some of their best offers. And the sale goes till November 28th. So thank you to EcoFlow for supporting this channel and for powering my dream. And now back to the story. My pockets are huge, so they're probably pushing. Um, stay up. You know, without the oh, overall, oh, oh. the fact that you got it on over overalls, I think I <laughs> I might have left uh, the elastic open because I didn't know if it was Usually be an eight and a half or nine. These are a little big. I was I don't told know. this No, this um this doesn't have uh it was difficult to sew on. It was difficult to match the oh, hey. evaluate you the property. Really? Wow. What do you why did I what do you mean? <laughs> yeah man. Hey. The hand looks huge. <laughs> it is, right? I don't know. It's like the moon's getting thinner right now, you see that? It's way thinner than it was. I'm just gonna let it run. And in early November, Allie and I went to go drive to the top of the mountain to catch the blood moon eclipse 
but didn't make it more than a few steps before being stopped in our tracks. It's pretty sweet. This is so exciting to be up so early. found a morning to try replacing the starter on Old Blue. Maybe it was the solenoid? I figured it might be time to call the maestro. And plus, I hadn't seen him much through the fire of fall. And somewhere during this time, Allie and I did one last garden cleanup. And she planted garlic, which we haven't had the pleasure of growing yet in our last two seasons together. Yeah, there's flowers blooming. Wait, it's flowering. I know. They came out of nowhere. Literally. And I didn't really get to mow much this year because of the drought, but I got one last cut in with my parents' old mower. What? Is that another one? Good dandy.
I was researching how you're supposed to put them in the ground and I guess you just use your hand and you plant them thumbs width, you plant them thumbs length deep and hands width apart. Uh, so the carrot patch from last And being at the cabin toward the end of the day as the world turns blue makes me feel completely content and at peace. And I look forward to making this a more regular feeling. Every year, it's always a treat when the first real blanket arrives. Can I place an order for pickup? Yes, you can. What would you like? Could I have a sausage Windsor? Okay. And that's Anything it. Else? All right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. And on one snowy morning, I went to do some cabin errands and test out the four-wheel drive in the Trooper. traveling around New England capturing fall. I'm happiest when I'm in the hills, taking care of my little to-dos. Thank you.
seeing the cabin road covered in snow had me feeling excited for the winter months ahead. There's just something about winter that kicks in certain primal instincts, like the need for fire and warm food. It makes you appreciate the simple things, like a warm car and a good pair of gloves. And with the shorter days, you feel less pressure for productivity in your life. And oh, to see and smell that chimney plume for the first time this season. And it was on this day that a diesel Dodge pulled down the cabin driveway. Come on. You gonna do it? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. He's like, I won't be able to get down. <laughs> That'd you could do pretty it. Pretty good forethought. Oh, we're right here. <laughs> yeah, dude, this is sweet. Was not expecting the sunshine today. <laughs> Please stop and give me the VIN number or the title or whatever type of truck that is. Yeah, sure. All right, thank you. Like all, all the shit, how many axles, everything, so that I can... And I know it looks bad with the trooper hood already up, but it was just a little EGR line that we had a quick plan to fix once we got up to Uncle John's shop later on. Want to turn the key? Yeah. Just leave it in the on position. All right, no, turn it to start. Uh, you hold it like, once you do that, you hold it. All right, it's all. So right now, there's 12, you know, essentially power to the starter right now, when there shouldn't be. <laughs> they don't look too bad, the teeth. Yeah, this starter, if it was spinning, like you heard it spinning, what happens is this. When I took the old one off, I, there was only the one wire. Yeah, I don't see any 
Why? It's just grounded to the block, to the bell housing, which is steel, so it would... Right. I had gotten a new solenoid, but still no luck. And we determined that even though the battery wasn't dead, maybe it needed some good time on the charger before it would actually get that starter to do its job. And so I plugged it into the cabin while we fixed the EGR line on the trooper. picked up the custom door and threw it on the roof and loaded some shiplap for the cabin kitchen into the back. And I smiled as already this machine was doing everything I could have hoped for. It was time to finish this cabin once and for all. Though with everything else to do in the background with life and our businesses, it was gonna be tight before the snow made the road impassable. But where there's a will, there's a way. And I'm hungry for completion and all the change that will come with it. <laughs> 